Guys, Fat Man's here. I've been looking for an alternative for my Bulgarian Makarov, which is right here. Chamber's empty. And the magazine's here. Got a loaded with Silver Bear 95 green hollow points. Like I've said before, this is what I've been carrying. And I want a new holster for it. And I want an outside the waistband. And I made this one some time ago. And while it fits really good, it's lacking some things that it really needs to have. It's not got the stability when it's on your belt. It doesn't have enough room in here. If I've got to pull the gun and draw, I have to actually pull it out. Pull it out a little before I can get a good purchase on it, which is not cool. So there's some things with that that are not fitting. This holster is wonderful, it's an, but it's an inside the waistband design of my own, and it just hooks onto your, you know, you slip it in your drawers and snap her on, and off you go. You're done. It's really simple. It's really sturdy. It's not uh, probably as sturdy as some I've had, but it's not really made. I don't know what that was, I ain't gonna bother with it. So, that being what it is, it goes in nice, and stays in pretty well. I did modify it here so that I could get a good purchase on it when I went to draw it, and I cut back some here so that my thumb wasn't in the way, and I could actually draw and be ready to fire. Just that simple. So, those are some of the considerations that I've taken into it. Now, I've looked at uh, pancake holsters before, and I like the design. So I started, I was going to uh, just make over, a fold-over design similar to this, and extend my belt loops and try to sturdy it up, but why mess with a design that already doesn't work? I already know it does not work. The nice part about being able to make your own holsters is that I can figure it out. So I cut this out, which is not a whole lot off from what that originally was. And I just came up with this by simply putting, putting my pistol down and drawing around it and leaving myself about three quarters of an inch knowing that that's enough for to put in my stitch lines. The gun itself is about an inch and an eighth wide, thereabouts. So I knew I'd be okay with that. Um, I haven't decided if I want to have a sweat shield, but I started out with that. And I laid that on here and as I was laying so I could make the second part. I'm like, wait a minute, this will turn into a really nice pancake holster. Voila, here's my outline for the pancake holster. I don't have stitch lines on it at this point because, quite honestly, I haven't decided. I'm probably going to go this route, but I don't really know where the stitch lines are going to be. What I'm going to probably do is put it together and say, hold it. I got some little clips. I'll clip it all together and check it out from there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to find two pieces of leather, and I'm going to cut those to this shape. And then I'll be back, and we'll see where we're going to go from there. So, stay tuned. Hey, YouTube. Back again. So, I've only cut a single piece for my pattern, and there's a reason for that. And as I try to be economical with everything I do, I only need one piece. And here's why. If I place it on here, on the front way, where it says front facing out, I know now that this is going to be outside of the holster. And I want, you know, if there's some grain or something in there that I really like, I want that to be able to show. Because let's face it, we have to have something, some kind of appearance too. And the back piece, this one's a little rougher, but to make the pattern for the back, 
Now this is the, what I would call the face of the leather. So is this. So the face of the leather, and then I've got the front of the pattern. So now I want the back of the pattern, and this is the face that's going to be facing inside. But if I flip my pattern over, upside down, and trace it out, then I have the opposite. So now I have a front and a back to the holster. Get this cut out quick here. The scissors that I'm using came with a uh, set of cooking knives. I think I've said that before. Uh, and I really need to get some more cooking videos out there because I sure like to cook when I can. Granddaughter just went to bed, so. And her mama came down here and brought her down and said good night. I'm spending more time downstairs right now because I need to keep myself busy. Some of you know that I've been chewing snuff since I was about 15 years old. And uh, I quit. I find that if I keep myself busy, it's a little easier. So like I said, this was the back, this was the front. And I can put both pieces together now. And I have the back face and the front face. So pretty simple. I'm going to burnish, try to, a different technique that I found to uh, burnish a little on the face of the leather since I'm using a pre-finished leather. And this is, it's like it only went through one station of the dye, so it's not like it's really set yet. I guess that's the way you can call it. So what I can do now is I can just hold it this way or I have my little clamps and I clamp it together. I can figure out where my stitch lines are gonna be. Just by setting the gun in here like that. So when I did my original, my muzzle came right here. Let's just bring the muzzle there. Right like that. So when I make my stitches, I'm going to have to come out. Leather will stretch when it's wet, so I'm not going to worry a lot about this. But if I'm going to put in a stiffener or anything like that, I need to think of that now. Because once it's glued and stitched together, it's really, really hard to add. I'm not thinking I'm going to need it because I think I'm going to uh, cure this leather in with heat. So rather than just letting it dry, I'm going to stick it in the oven at a low, really low heat for about half an hour and just bake that moisture out of it, which hardens the leather. And that's what my thought is for this one. Again, that's something that I just kind of thought of at the last minute. So, I'm going to start my stitch line there and end it there. And this one, I need to leave some room. I need to be a little more abstract with it. Thinking something like that, it's not going to work because I got to have that up high enough. All right, rethinking. Beauty again of making your own. Those should be good.
thinking that's a better path there. Now, of course, I have a line on my leather that I don't want there. And like I said, I don't think this was done anyway. It looks like it's taken some of the dye right off. So, I will have to treat this anyway. I'll probably put a little more of the EcoFlow dye on it. But with that, the, uh, along the top of the pistol can just pretty much be straight. So I have my line here. To come to stitch around my trigger guard. Which I'm leaving, I'm not leaving a lot. I'm only leaving about a quarter of an inch beyond the edge here. So we're gonna have to be kind of careful when we stitch that. And what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to take and use my clamps and hold this together and I'm going to drill my holes so I'm not gluing it yet because I wanted I haven't decided if I'm going to do a stiffener yet I may or I may not and I don't want it glued together when I do that I'm just going to put in my, my stitch lines my stitch holes and then I'll go from there so, all my stitch holes are, is I'm going to take my stitch groover and I'm just going to go like this here. And that's going to be where each hole is going to go, and I know you can't see that. Get up and show you. Maybe. I don't know. It doesn't show up real well. You can see it. There you go. You can see my little dots. That's where holes are going to be. And you can kind of see my outline that I drew, I kind of sketched in there. And I'll go around there with the stitch, stitch wheel too. So we're going to check that out. I'm going to get those holes drilled after I clamp everything up. And, uh, We'll get back with you a little later. Um, I think I'm going to call this pattern making for a pancake holster and I'm going to go and I'll do a separate video for actual assembly and we'll do a third video for what shall we call it? Forming? Something like that. So Stay safe, God bless, and uh, keep watching for the rest.